that's what you want to do. Because I'm happy. I'm lonely if you feel like a room that's out of room. Because I'm happy. I'm lonely if you feel like happiness is the truth. Because I'm happy. I'm lonely if you know what happiness is the truth. Good morning, good morning, everyone. Happy uh, Thursday. Uh, I'm noting, so we just went live as well. Uh, so we'll keep an eye. Uh, thank you for those that are jumping, uh, that are here uh, live on the webinar and for those that are watching uh, at home from, from uh, Facebook as well. We're excited to have you on here uh, and excited to be talking about this topic today. For those guests that are on the line, my name is Monica Rivera. I'm the team leader uh, for Keller Williams Southeast Los Angeles uh, and, and very excited to be joined uh, by, by Rich Rector and then I'll introduce our panelists uh, in just a, a second as well. Um, Rich is, is the owner of our market center here at Keller Williams Southeast Los Angeles uh, as well as affiliated with a couple different um, a couple different market centers as well and uh, is a maps coach uh, has been through you know quite a few shifts in the market and as we've been doing these webinars so for those of you that have joined us on these webinars before uh, a couple of the different topics that we've talked about is really looking at how we can maximize on this market of the moment so anytime a shift happens right we want to look for what is the new uh, opportunity that that is out there and that's available so we've talked about absentee owners uh, we've talked about you know the the uh, forbearance market and that conversation uh, begged a second look right and that's where we really want to talk about this pre uh, foreclosure market so I'm really excited that today we actually have uh, a, an amazing uh, guest on the line with us who's taking some of her time to share a little bit of what she's done uh, just to share a little bit about Christina Griffin, she's in the top 1% of all real estate agents in the United States. She's had a career that has spanned two decades. In fact, I was very impressed um, because Christina got into the business when she was 18, uh, managing a 650 unit at com unit community. So, uh, and, and she did it while, while embracing and balancing motherhood, right? Which, which is a challenge in its own right. Uh, and so she's, she started an absolutely amazing career. She has been, uh, she started and earned the 53 spot on the Wall Street Journal, uh, Real Trends Top 1000 Agents in 2016. And the Griffin uh, Group has been there ever since as a team this year as 26 in the country uh, on transaction sides, right? She's also been the recipient of the Elder Award, was nominated for Tampa Bay Business Journal, uh, woman of the Year in 2016, has over 4,000 closings under her belt, and her properties average only 45 days on market, and list to sale price ratio of 96%. Part of the reason that I love that, and I think that's so important, is that a real estate agent, it's very important that we have an understanding of our numbers and speak that language of real estate, and so I love that, that she shares that and is really making uh, history in that way with, with her business. Um, the second thing on that, Christina is also a coach and she's in Gary Keller's top 100. So for those of you that are familiar with Gary, you know what that means, that, that there's 100 people that he spends additional time with because of, of the scope that they've grown in their business. Um, so I'm really excited to have uh, Christina on. She also, what I really loved as well is the passion and the compassion that she has for dealing with her clients. So she shares that is when, when we're looking at this market, especially the pre-foreclosure market, uh, when you're dealing with any type of distressed property, you're also dealing with families that are in distress. And so I love that she shared, you know, that, that the key to her success has been that compassion that she really brings to the table. Uh, and, and she's just really the epitome of falling nine times and get a 10. So Christina, we're really excited to have you on. I'm gonna go ahead and pop the presentation up. On yeah, the real quick, Mark, I just wanna say as well uh, about Christina and, and she just literally got off Gary Keller's uh, mastermind um, right before this call. Um, so I'm glad that you brought that up. <clears throat> Christina and her team this year, year to date, okay, we're at the halfway point in the year, guys, 292 closings, 292 year-to-date closings with 51 pending right now. 
So not only is she one of the top in the world, um, we're thrilled about what she's going to talk to you about today because we feel, and obviously Christina feels, that this is the market of the moment, and this is the market that's coming, and this is your opportunity to take listings, to help the clients, the consumers, and to really take your unfair share of the market. Because remember, guys, 65% of the, percent of the real estate agents in real estate in the nation have, were not in the business in 2008. 65% of them were not in real estate in 08. And of the people that were, the 35% of the agents that were, that are still in real estate now, what percentage of them understood short sales, foreclosures, pre-foreclosures, that whole process? I can tell you, I was in the business, not many. I, I would say maybe 5% of the people in our industry right now, industry-wide, even understand what she's going to share with us today. So we're thrilled to have her. We're thrilled about the program she's going to talk about at the end that she's launching next week that we're going to participate in as a, as a market center and, and learn how to do this so that we can help you with the training um, right in our market center on an ongoing basis to help you as we move through this, this market. So Christina, uh, I think you're on mute. Uh, go ahead yes. and unmute and take it away. <laughs> go ahead, Monica, as well. Thank you for having me. And I've learned to mute uh, as we work from home through COVID. Uh, I've got a dog and three kids and it's um, thundering outside. So it's never a dull moment. So thank you for having me. Um, yes, I have been in the market since um, 2001 and I have been an agent since then. And for me, you know, a quick uh, about who I am. Um, I've experienced a lot of loss. My mom, dad, and sister all died nine years apart. My mom was a broker with Century 21. And I was 18 years old and had to make the choice to get into the business. Uh, well, to go to college or take custody of my sister. So my ex said, why don't you get into real estate like your mom? And that's how it happened. So I've experienced tons of loss. Uh, I have beat cancer. I've lost over a hundred pounds in the last two and a half years through gastric sleeve, had my miracle baby. Um, I've gone through divorce. Uh, I have gone through pretty much everything you can imagine, lost everything, rebuilt it. And I have a passion for this side of the industry as um, in 2008, um, it, there were a lot of people that didn't know what their options were. I started the foreclosure distress investor world in 2004, um, where I was doing short sales when they weren't cool and there was no process for them. And a lot of that had to do with, uh, at 21 years old, I was putting investors on buses and taking them to foreclosure listings and showing them the houses with contractors. So I've always thought out of the box and have always approached things differently. Um, it's interesting if I would have joined Keller Williams back then, life would be very different. <laughs> so um, one thing I would like to share with you is what that has taught me is the experience. I have seen the peak of the boom. I've seen investors buying properties, cash out refinances, all the ups and downs that happen with the market. And I got into the REO world as they started losing all of their houses. And the companies started asking me to represent the buyers I sold houses to. So what that has taught me is in 2008, the way the market was, um, we're, we're experiencing a market that is unprecedented and there are so many unknown factors. But what I do know is there's over 4 million people that have missed their mortgage payment in May of 2020. And any of the numbers that I would share with you, just know that they're fluid, they're changing, they're going up. Uh, I use a reference, uh, CoreLogic and Black Knight. They're two really great references um, that you can take a look at what happens in our, in our market. But there's over 4 million homeowners that missed their mortgage payment. There's over 4 million homeowners that have taken a forbearance. 
as you guys know, is forbearance does not mean forgiveness. Many people took this option because they did not know better. I personally called a bank on behalf of my mother-in-law and over the phone, if I would have said yes, they would have gave her a four month forbearance. She's 78 years old, doesn't understand what that means. So the reason why I'm explaining this is I have always had a servant's heart. I wanna help people. We do a lot of work in the homeless community due to the fact that I've seen people really lose their homes, not know what their options are, and um, commit suicide. Lots of really unprecedented things that we don't want to talk about. And I have a passion for teaching people what their options are, and you should as well. Many states are going through what's called a foreclosure moratorium. That means that there is, we don't know um, really truly what those numbers are until the banks start foreclosing again, until the forbearances start getting reported on credit. But what I do know is your home, where you live, people in your neighborhood, they need your help. And we just have to have that servant's heart to want to help them and understand how to help them. And that's, that's really, Again, what I have a super big passion for, um, there is many people are not going to be able to pay their mortgage payment and what they owe on the forbearance. What I want you to understand and realize on that is many experts say that we're in a different equity position than what we were in 2008. However, if someone misses four to six months of mortgage payments and they go into what's called forbearance status, that means if they owe 100,000 on the home, those six months of mortgage payments go on top of what they owe. In addition to closing costs and commission and everything to sell their home, so in essence that eats up a lot of their equity. So many people are gonna be in a situation where they cannot refinance, they don't have the ability to make those payments. So we have to learn to think out of the box and offer them solutions. So I was just on a mastermind call with Gary and he even, we talked about how many people are losing their jobs, continuing to lose their jobs. That unemploy unemployment is higher than it's ever been. So. When we look at a situation like what's happening our, in our world, the more we can learn to help people in our community, give them options, um, once they get on the right path, once they get a job back, and once they build up their savings, we're going to be able to help them on that next stage of their life. So it may be learning how to offer solutions through the forbearance process, putting them into a rental and nurturing them long time, uh, long term. Sorry, it's been a long day, <laughs> long term, but they're never going to forget you if you're there to help them in this time of need. So the report shows in just March alone, uh, and this is before they stopped the, before the forbearance and before the, many of the moratoriums, which that means they stopped the foreclosure activity, there was over 46,000 U.S. properties with foreclosure filings in March of 2020. All of this is going to change the end of August unless they extend it again. So the numbers, I, I, there, there's so many experts that say what they're going to be. All I know is there's going to be a lot so if we could take this time in between and be that resource and show your neighborhood and the people that you know, like, and trust that you can help give them options before they ruin their credit, it's just going to change their lives and impact them in a really big way. As foreclosure activity across the country continued to decline, so it started to decline in March, but that was before the virus and everything happened. So... I'm gonna go on to the next slide. And the reason why I'm telling you some of these numbers, because I, I just want, you, want it to sit in for you so you, you understand how many households are affected. Many of these numbers 
are from March because many of the states, the counties and uh, areas, they stopped with foreclosure filings to help people that were suffering and dealing with loss uh, through coronavirus. And it could have just been losing their job um, or health, uh, the health pandemic. So over, so lenders completed the foreclosure process on over 9,000 properties in March, down 13%. So it was down. However, that's a lot. What I do know is in February, I personally received over 30 foreclosure listings in February uh, directly from the bank as an REO agent. So that just goes to show how things were trending up. And I hadn't received that many in a one month time frame, and I'd say probably five years from the banks. What's interesting, Christina, is that, you know, I, I um, leave this stuff every day, too, on the different lender uh, publications and Riz Media. And the latest that I heard is there's five and a half a million people in forbearance, which is almost 10% of the people that have a home mortgage, one out of 10 in the country. Well, and um, so a lot of people, they have heard in the news, but they don't understand that, well, they don't have to, it's going to get put on the back of their loan. That's not necessary. Those are government backed loans that are working to do that. Because what many people don't understand is there's what's called a subprime market, or many lenders, institutional investors, they bought pools of non performing assets, which are mortgage loans, and they're not backed by the government, they're private funds. So they cannot take those 12 months of payments and put them on the back of the loan because they still have to pay interest on the money. So that's why those properties are going to slam through foreclosure, in my opinion, as quick uh, you know, as they can because they can't afford to wait until it gets put on the back of the loan. So they call the, there's many different people that are talking, there could be mortgage bailouts, things like that. But I, I'm just keeping a close eye on it because it's, it's changing. And Wells Fargo just bought tons of um, mortgages that were affected by coronavirus um, because of similar situations. So, you know, Black Knight, again, is a great resource. It's our job, as you said, one out of every 10 mortgages that's such a big part of your farm, where you work. And it's our job to really help and offer solutions. And a lot of it is going to be working with cash investors to buy properties, to put the homeowners that are going through forbearance in a rental. It could be a six month or a year rental because they can't get another mortgage until they catch up their forbearance payments. So there's a lot, they can't refinance. They, they enter into what's called loss mitigation status. And that's what a short sale is. So, but I, I geek out on the stuff and the numbers, but you know, it's really just learning how to navigate this. And everything that I teach is things that I've applied and I've learned um, and I've uh, put into effect in my personal business. And I've done since 2004. So, but, well, like you're saying with it being a consultant, which is the approach you take, the, 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 I guess the good thing, the good news is, is that, you know, we're coming off the best real estate market in the history of the world. So most people have equity, right? Mm -hmm. Which creates an opportunity for, for us to help them get through this, to save their credit, to actually walk away with some cash, to put them in a rental like you, like you're saying, and potentially even buy a home a year or two years from now that they got at a discount because of the foreclosure market that we'll see. So it's, it's really imperative to, to start this consulting process now. You know, like well, and it's, it's getting to them quickly before their equity is ate up with them not paying those payments. Because what happens is, and it's a trend, when someone's behind, they don't know how to catch up. So they just continue it. So it, it's really our job. Um, to educate them on what those options are. And it's really, truly, um, it's gonna be everlasting because I've learned that when you help them during this time, they never forget you and they tell everybody. And you're going to have to learn to 
it's almost make this the norm. It's not, oh, you're losing your house. Oh, you're behind on your mortgage payments. You have to have that heart to just want to be there and help them and offer solutions. And the, the real estate market is going to be a market of pre-foreclosures. People that are in um, forbearance or pre-foreclosure, but it's not going to necessarily mean a short sale. So it's learning how to navigate that process that's important. I think the other thing that you mentioned that, that is so important, I mean, I've had agents coming and we've been reviewing a different foreclosure agreements as well. And I'll know, you know, primarily the ones that we're seeing have been balloon payment, right? That's, that's been a huge, uh, or, or worse in a way is, oh, we'll figure out terms later. Right? Oh yeah. You know why? Because they, they're hoping for bailouts because they, they're figuring out terms later because they don't know. And, and that, that's where, for us, that's not a great place for the people that we know, like, and trust to be at. So, um, and, and who knows when they figure out terms, how much time you're going to get, you know? So, and there's a whole different perspective with unemployment. Now, you know, I personally am dealing with a five-year-old. Do I send them back to school? How many, how many schools are affected that things are not going to be normal school times where the moms and dads aren't going to be able to fully go back to work? So there are so many different phases of what can potentially happen and unknown. So we can't have our head in the sand. We need to learn how to be able to navigate this for our clients. One, one question that we have from the audience uh, is, you know, that you said earlier, if you miss three to four months of mortgage payments, will there be adverse credit reporting? So uh, it depends on your agreement with the bank. So if they say they're, you're going to get, you know, I, I'll use an example that I actually called for my mother-in-law. She's with Flagstar. Flagstar gave her four months and uh, we chose not to do it. I, I called as a, a trial. They gave her four months. So my question to them was, if I can't pay those payments in four months, what happens? Well, more than likely, we'll give you another four more months, but you're going to enter into what's called loss mitigation status. And you're going to have to submit the pack, like a financial package to us. Now, when you enter into that loss mitigation status, that's when they, they do the negative uh, reporting on your credit. But there's tons of reports that people are saying that um, banks are filing, that they miss their payments, and it's affecting their credit already. I believe you'll be able to dispute that, but there's so much unknown. Um, so really being able to ask those hard questions and teach your clients on how to do that is going to be very important. Yeah. And, and I'll note locally, uh, we have seen some NODs, you know, some notice of defaults where it's coming up as a missed payment on their credit reports. We've seen a couple of those, uh, just from, from agents that are talking with their clients here. The other thing we've seen that is also a little bit scary, uh, has been, the financial institutions prospecting the client to get into forbearance. My, my brother got a call from his uh, bank, you know, that they're, that they're getting paid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. They're getting paid to do that. So, and they're picking up notice of defaults. This is very low, but I just checked um, my system. There's 33 that were filed in the last four days. So we're going to see um, the first week of September, um, it, in my opinion, that's when we're going to see the pickup in a very high level of all of this, but it's going to depend on what happens with that moratorium or not. Yeah. Yeah. So in a great way to really navigate that is, um, that normally falls under evictions. So a lot of people aren't being evicted due to not paying their mortgage payments. So picture how many absentee owners where people aren't paying their rent payment and they can't pay their mortgage payments that are affected. So, um, okay, so you guys know uh, there's, there's a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of numbers that are gonna happen, a lot of unpredictable. A lot of it's gonna depend on your state, on what's happening in your government, um, and you know, really the delay or not. So um, they're, they're really just, 
a lot of them are delaying the inevitable to give people more time. Um, but right now, um, you know, I, I want to go over a few simple proce uh, prospecting approaches. You can pick up the phone, okay? So I know it's a novel concept, but you can pick up the phone. There's an app called Hit 'em Up that uh, we use, um, and they should still have a free trial. It it'll allow you to text everyone in your your address book. I had 4,400 people in mine. It was quite an interesting day on those responses. But you can something simple. And that you can text them just checking in on them. It's a different approach to care calls, but it's really just checking on people. Um, and uh, handwritten letters, that is something that goes a long way. Um, handwritten letters is something that goes a long way. So um, people in your community, it depends on how hard you, you want to hit your prospecting, your past clients. Send out cards is a great option. Door hangers, which I included a letter and uh, door hangers that you guys can share. Just something simple, it's goofy. Uh, we do it at, that we're forbearance uh, experts and uh, we've been getting a lot of really great responses. Uh, post-it notes, uh, you can actually get customized post-it notes, uh, a whole pack, and just say, hey, it, it's Christina, call me it, with your contact info and different uh, things that you can put on the note. Hot buys, uh, in your direct neighborhood uh, or wherever you work, your sphere, your farm, your farm uh, there's different uh, hot buys that you can do, but just, just a reason to, to talk to people about uh, what's going on. And it, this is silly, but I'm telling you it works. And what we did is we sent those to everybody that was a pre-foreclosure. Uh, I actually have a runner that does it. We sent them to, we put them on the door of everyone that is a pre-foreclosure, expired, canceled, because there's a lot of expireds and canceled that need someone to just navigate and show them what uh, the options are. And uh, I, I pull different data, like people behind on their water payments, code enforcement. Uh, most cities have abandoned house lists that you can send it to where the, um, the house is absentee owners, but it's just something simple and it's goofy and, and people love it and, and they pick up the phone and call us. So um, just to show them that you're there to be able to help. Um, and it's, um, it's just, it, you can tweak the message for your area, but you guys get the concept around that. In a simple letter, it goes a long way too. Um, so that, that is actually, um, it just, yeah, that's just a simple letter that we have sent um, and had very high success to people that are physically in pre-foreclosure. And I'll show you a, a quick way to see what the opportunity is in your area, but that's just a simple letter that you can um, put into what's called a yellow letter format where it, it, it looks like you handwrite it or you can have your kids stuff envelopes and, and send, it at, send it out. So there's really a lot of approaches. Many of you are gonna look at the notice of default list and think it's very low, but just keep in mind in the next 60 days, this is gonna rapidly change. Also, many of you are gonna look at how can I work with people in forbearance? Just know, like Rich said, one out, out of every 10 homeowners more than likely are in it. So just be that expert in, in your community and really talk to people about that. Okay, and um, I don't know how long I have. Um, you know, we do, pot, we do pot buys and postcards and really the simplest text is you don't say, hey, I know you're losing your house. Hey, I know you're behind on your payments. If you were offered the right price, for your house, would you be willing to sell? So learning how to navigate those conversations, learning how to pull the data of people that are cash, that own, buy cash properties in that neighborhood. So when someone does raise their hand and say they're willing to sell, you can learn how to approach the investors on how to have those conversations with them and 
you'd be surprised. A lot of communities have multiple owners in them um, that have bought the house as cash that in the last downturn have held those properties as, uh, as rentals. Most, a lot of the money that is coming out now, because a lot of the I buyers, they've stopped buying. It's the cash that bought 10 plus years ago. Those are the ones that are coming out of the woodwork. So it's learning how to find them and be able to offer them opportunity. Um, and it could be, hey, can you buy this house via a short sale? And the occupant ha has gone back to work. Would you rent it to them? You know, there, there's a lot of different options that you could do. So um, I, I love that you that shared that because I think, you know, we saw that a lot, um, especially out here in our area. It's, it's definitely high demand. We've seen you know, investors come the last few years and still want to do flips and things like that when they find those distressed properties. Um, and I think that's where we, we really have to look creatively at what is the opportunity. Those that were doing it in, in 08, you know, 09, that were buying up properties, they may be familiar with the rent back opportunity, mm -hmm. right? They're, they're open to it because they know that the person who is potentially losing their home at this point one has passion and cares for the home, right? They, they already live there. They've cared for the home. Um, so there's a lot of really creative opportunity that comes up. I think yep. that's so, so important. And it's, it's to always stay in integrity, you know, always stay arm's length. You can offer the solutions and working with an, a, a solid investor. Most of my relationships I've had have been over 10 years. I have a gentleman, I sell one or two houses a month to for the last 10 years. And it, you know, it, it, it's really just being an in integrity and learning those options, you know, learning how to let an investor buy a property and, and potentially letting the person that lives there not pay for a few months, you know? So there, there are many different things that, you know, we all need to learn to navigate in this market. And, you know, uh, there are many ideas I can teach you on how to, to prospect, but like anything, you need to take your schedule and time block for prospecting. So if you're, if you really enjoy the phone, do it on the phone. I love a mix of the letters. I'm a send out card queen and I love to walk my neighborhood and there's ways that you can actually see who is in distress in your neighborhood. And you can literally just, as you're walking, send them a send out card from your phone. Um, but this screenshot is Florida. Um, before the pandemic, um, it, you know, it, it's the notice of defaults in Florida, which I, I it's going to be a lot higher. But once those restart the foreclosure, you know, this was before the moratorium number 6,300. Um, that's a lot of homes. So it's just to kind of show, you know, that that's, that's what I used to look at, um, the, uh, land voice is a tool that the land voice is one of the tools that you use correct yes yes because the numbers are good it shows who's on the do not call because it's very important to respect that um, many of them will be on the do not call that's where send out cards or a letter or door hanger comes in play so you always have to stay within those guidelines um, and they like expireds they filter when the notice of default happens Mm -hmm. and then so I think on the next slide, you have auction.com is another one of your tools, right? I, I, d I do. And auction.com is, um, and I don't know if you have a, the ability to play the video. If not, um, if you have a screen share, I can actually navigate you through it. Um, ju just for them to show, show um, it, you can actually go to auction.com and I can even walk you through how to do it. Um, if you want to share your screen. Absolutely. It, Let me pop that yeah. up. Yeah. So I, um, mo most people don't realize that auction.com feeds in almost every foreclosure calendar in the country. Uh, so it also is one of the places that most of the banks list their properties. So the reason I it, you, um, go to auction, auction.com before you spend money on resources, it's a great place to start. Now, I want you to just put in your, your area, your, your county, your city, anything like that in auction.com when you share the screen. Hi, everyone. Okay. Well, it looks like it's... Uh... 
Oh, it was going to play my video, but you can, I can walk you through it. It'll be fun. Go ahead and play it. Okay. No, no, it's, uh, I think it's on your end. Okay. Uh, Hope everyone's having a great day. So first to share it, I wanted to show you a quick. Yeah. Sorry, technology happens and, uh, well, you, you, know, you know what, do you want to share yours? It'll, I, I, we could show your area if, if you want, it's, it's easy. <laughs> no, you, we can go ahead and play it on yours. My screen uh, is, is okay. near right now. So we did a quick uh, change. But okay, you, you, know, you know what, share, share, share the screen and I'll walk through it real, real, let me see if I can share my screen. Oh, here, um. Are you able to see that? Yeah. Okay, there you go. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, great. Let go ahead and let me know which. Uh, so put been, in your put in area. yeah wherever you want wherever you want just type it in in there. I'm going to show you how to navigate your area. Okay, so I want you to go to asset type and drop it down. And it looks like your your foreclosures have definitely stopped. So you go to foreclosure homes. And that, that's how you can see, um, if you want to type in a bigger city like Las Vegas or, you know, Los one of Angeles. your, yeah. So this is how you can see who has uh, uh, properties that have sale dates. So if you filter up to the top, there's 489 properties that have sale dates that have been set in Los Angeles. So I, I, I always tell people to start here. You send a letter, um, but these are the people you should be contacting. These are the people that the banks have already set a sale date. There's a lot of data that you can pay for. This is simple and it shows you how to determine the opportunity in your area. And it's a great place to get started. So, you know, whether it's putting a door hanger, sending a mailer, having a VA or an assistant go through and, and find everyone's addresses, sending a piece of a $5 pizza to their house with a note, there are things that you can do, but every one of these homes have sale dates. Um, so I would highly recommend um, who, wherever you are in the world to, this is, a great first place to start before you invest um, and commit to spending money on different systems. Now, also, you were you were uh, sharing um, before on the webinar I was on with you about the difference between the spread if they have equity and which one's a good short sale. Yeah. Yeah. So um, that's where going to your foreclosure calendar, which I, uh, my video does show that our foreclosure calendar, but it's finding out where you can locate the foreclosure calendar in your particular area. And, you know, um, actually, actually, you can go back because I know we're, we have time. I'm going to show you yours actually says it. Okay. So, so if you go back to that share, so you're going to see um, there, there is here you can see uh, opening bid 345 um, estimated resale value 496 so i recommend you figuring out how to access the foreclosure calendar in your county and normally you could just put your county uh, and i do i use uh, what's called real foreclose uh, and, and it will usually pull it up for every county our state, that's the system we're on. So here, in essence, you see an opening bid of 345 and an estimated resale value of 496. If those numbers were correct, I would be door knocking that house because that equity spread is going to create a potential flip for one of your investors, you yourself to build wealth, or uh, a, a opportunity for you to be able to put this on the market and make them money now so they don't lose their home. Now, if it's flipped, like um, these are actually pretty pretty good ones, uh, but if it was flipped, say the um, the value was um, lower or different, and more than likely these aren't the exact judgment amounts because it doesn't normally feed in correctly here. But if it was flipped and it said a judgment amount was four hundred thousand and the estimated re resale was two hundred. That's how you know it's a short sale. That's how you know to customize your marketing toward being a short sale. Now, the foreclosure calendar 
it's like I use the analogy of a divorce. A divorce is filed. You're going to go through all of the emotion until that divorce actually occurs. That's the same thing with a foreclosure filing. You, you have to learn what a notice of default, what that is and how to approach it. This is before they lose their home. This is when a sale date happens, before it goes REO, when reality sets in, it's going to be a very different conversation. And that's what I, that's part of what I teach how to do that. And I know it's a lot, but what I would say is even if you learn how to navigate the forbearance and learn how to work with, uh, on the buyer side, because whether you like it or not, more than likely you're going to represent a buyer in a short sale or a bank owned foreclosure in the next year, if you're doing business. So it's learning how to be able to navigate that is super important. So, you know, whether it's building wealth for yourself um, or, you know, creating opportunity to list, you know, properties, um, you know, in your area and understanding the options to give the sellers. It's, it's just, it's super important. Well, we'll also imagine with our, our uh, lead accelerator program through Facebook and Keller Williams, being able to advertise these, these listings, advertise these opportunities, the amount of buyers and investors that you would able to accumulate for your own database overnight with it would be unbelievable. So that's how I created the team is um, I actually, I came to Keller Williams to learn how to run a successful business. But in 2014, I went into a coaching program uh, because one of my banks told me to, to go check it out. It, and I walked out a changed woman. I didn't even know what a CRM was. Uh, I had over a hundred listings um, they took the leads that came into the office. They were sent, basically just giving them to agents in the office. No one said you need, you need a team, you need structure. And, um, so I took control of my business and followed the plan to create a team and we should create teams because we have so much business. We can't handle it ourselves. So an REO or a distressed property is going to create 10 times as many opportunities because people are going to think they have a deal. We even do and have uh, open houses when we could and have bank owned open houses. And I'd have hundreds of people there. So, you know, really, um, yes, you can, you know, do custom list in Facebook with a notice of default list. There's lots of different things that you can do, uh, but learning out how to have the conversations and actually like anything prospecting you time block, you got to do it. That, that's what's important. And that's what you, you're teaching in your class. And that's what we're going to take and, and teach in our market center uh, as we learn it from you uh, as well, is what to say, what to send, how to, how to handle the process, what are the tricks of the trade. Um, I think you said that the process is going to be a lot more streamlined this go around than it was in 08. So the quicker that we can learn these things, um, you know, the quicker we can help people and really for lack of a better word, I mean, take your unfair share of the market because the other, your competitors, the other agents aren't going to know how to do this. It, yes. And you just have to do, you have to do the work. And what we are going to start with is the understanding of the different phases of foreclosure and how to navigate that and then work through learning how to do a short sale, um, building short sale departments, all the way from working with investors uh, to becoming an and listing REO for, uh, foreclosures, if that's what you want. So, you know, it's definitely something you have to build on. Uh, and that's what I'm going to teach is everything I've learned and how it applies into this market. Um, and you just have to do the exercises and do the work and open, open your mind to it. So I kind of geek out on it, as you can tell. But, you know, I, re I really, it, it's something um, to me that we're all really going to need to learn. And I'll tell you, when you learn how to analyze um, data and potential opportunities, it can change so many lives, um, sure. you know, through, through this. So yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to have the opportunity. Monica, if you can maybe pull up that last slide so we, we'll talk about that. We can open up for some Q&A. Okay, well, go ahead. One thing, one thing to note on that, and that I love uh, that you share why I pull up, I love one that you geek out on the data because I'm a big uh, believer that we need to know how to interpret that, that information as well. Um, but one of the things that I think is so, so important as we look at, you know, just, just the way that you approach it. And one of the things you said, it's about 
coming from consultation, coming from compassion, you know, this particular market is such a huge opportunity. And yet it's also a place where we really prove the fiduciary duty that we have to our clients, right? Because we're either in a scenario where we're helping them to get out of a bad situation and protecting the equity that they already mm -hmm. have, mm -hmm. or we're in a situation where, where sometimes, you know, the best thing for them is, is to sell before they're in a place where now they have this foreclosure on their history. And so we're protecting uh, their, their credit so that they could potentially yeah. buy it again in the future. And I think that's so important in this particular um, lead gen scenario is that we have to come you know, from, from that compassion and also that mm -hmm. candor of really letting them know, hey, this is the scenario, this is the situation that you're in and let's lay out those options uh, for you. And yep. we change lives, right? right? You're, you're out there changing okay. so many lives and, and saving people. As well. and you have and you yeah. have texts, texts and scripts and things everything. that you're going to share in your program yeah. and teach, and that's yep. what we're going to. Yep. Yes, absolutely everything. I, I, it's um, it's through with the KW KW seal of approval on it. So it's yeah. uh, I will tell you, I always um, it's important to stay in that integrity, and uh, one deal is not worth um, you know, not staying in this business. So I, I'll teach you how to navigate this. You know, you can learn how to make your clients, you know, very rich. You can learn how to save people's credit, but it's also that compassion piece is important. And you may have to get a U-Haul and help them move before they lose their house or put them into a rental you know, um, and a lot of people, they get really great at the transactional side of this business, but that's where it comes to building out a team and getting them into that next step and then nurturing them for long-term. So this is really going to just create your long-term pipeline because it's, it's multiple sales. You have to deal with the listing, then you put them in a rental or, or that, that year until they save their credit and, and then you help them again buy that home. So uh, we'll definitely teach you how to navigate through all yeah. of that. Yeah, Monica, if you can go to full screen on that too, um, so we can talk about that program. So um, a couple questions, Christina, um, is what's the best way to meet uh, good investors? I think we kind of talked a little bit about that with you know, the advertising, but can you maybe elaborate on that? How can you leverage just to create an investor pool if there's agents on this webinar that don't have a lot of investors? Sure, so, you know, um, it, there's a lot of data that is free. You can see who purchased homes for cash in the areas that you farm, look them up on tax records and send them a note. Um, many of the areas, most people don't realize because you don't look for it. Uh, you put, you look up Facebook groups that, that are your area, investor group, wholesale group, um, and you find investors that way. Uh, there's a lot of investor um, RIAs, they call it. So that I was, that was my main source of finding investors. They were basically groups in most areas that are, are large. They have, a, it's like an investor networking group and you become that expert that's there. Um, so, it, or just post on your Facebook, it, you know, it, are, are you interested in learning how to invest? Do you know anyone that's actively buying investment homes? Because I, I have opportunity and you will get a lot of realtors that probably want to share it with their clients and then a, a lot of investors. So there's a lot of different strategies that I can teach you. Yeah, and then there was a question around uh, scripts that, that I know that, that, that you have and we're going to have as well. Um, but maybe a small, just a quick role play on how you would uh, approach somebody, um, maybe, you know, that's in forbearance or that's on the auction.com. I mean, what would you, besides like the door hangers and things, I mean, what would you say generally? Would so, be a conversation? so with forbearance, we won't find out until it becomes notice of default because um, we as agents don't buy credit data. So that, that's where the one day late comes through credit data. Um, but once it becomes a notice of default, I always approach it with the, the simple script I shared before. You need to get one or two cash buyers. Um, and you approach it with you have buyers looking to buy homes in their neighborhood. If they were offered the right price, would they be willing to sell? 
Now, they may not respond or they may say, tell me. Most of them will say, well, I'm in foreclosure or this is happening. Then you follow it up with, I know you're losing your house, the next touch. I normally, unless it's a week or two out from the foreclosure sale, you got to be a little bit softer and, and it, with it and it'd be there to just say, hey, I know people that are buying homes or do one of the care check-ins, but soft on the first approach. And then the second approach is, you know, um, where you have solutions. It depends if you're texting them or what you're doing. I love handwritten notes. Um, I love to send out cards. Um, it, it's just sending them, you know, that you would love to be there and offer it, and help. Great. Um, and if you guys, if you have questions, uh, put them in the chat box, additional questions. This is a, a program that, that Christina is doing uh, with Jeannie Osnes um, starting on August 6th, two weeks from now. And it's going to be three months, a three month program, group program, where she's going to take you through this entire program. Materials is included, the whole thing. We're, I'm going through the program as well so that we can learn this and bring this to you for training and, and so on. Um, but I, I would not miss this program. Um, all you need to do, go is to go to mapscoaching.com um, and go to group programs uh, and the foreclosure, pre foreclosure program. And, it, and I would register for that today. Um, cause again, this is, this is going to be the market of the moment. This is going to be the, the thing that if you were in the business in 08, we all wished that we knew how to do foreclosures and we had that foreclosure account and we all, how are these people getting all these listings? We all, if you were in the business, you were that person. I was too. And we wanted to know how to do that. And she's going to teach you how to do that before this market hits. So that's why we wanted to bring her on today and and we thank you so much for for your time uh, monica i'll turn it back over to you if you um, want to close it out i know that we have some materials that if people want they can email you monica and we can get you to those materials uh, i'll turn it back over to you absolutely thank you so much christina i i it, for those of you watching and i know some of you are watching here some of you are watching on facebook one christina is an absolute wealth of knowledge right you you can see the passion that she has, um, not just on, on having an understanding of this market, because that's so important, is, is I really want you guys to think about what we shared at the beginning on just some of the statistics and really seeing that we're, we're anticipating what's coming, right? Yeah. We're, we're in a place where, okay. you know, it's, uh, it's essentially an unprecedented uh, market that we've gone into. And we had, you know, an unprecedented market in 2008, 2009, we know that shifts come and when shifts happen, there's opportunity. This time, you know, is a little bit different because we were thrust into a pandemic and that pandemic has completely changed things, right? And whenever something changes, we have to pivot our businesses. We have to make sure that we're utilizing the right tools to be able to move forward in our business. You know, there's a quote that, that I always, uh, that, that Gary shares in, in shift, uh, that I think is so important. And he says, you know, we can't use yesterday's tools, right? We can't mm -hmm. use yesterday's tools and expect to be successful tomorrow. We have to make sure that we're pivoting to the market at the moment. Um, one, I'm so grateful to Christina for, for taking your time today uh, and, and sharing mm -hmm. this with us. And I know there's a lot of questions that we didn't have an opportunity to answer at you guys because this is such a broad topic. Yeah. right? It's such a big uh, topic. And this isn't something that you can learn in one hour, right? You can learn a little bit about it in some of the tools. And, you know, it's kind of like there, there's models for success in everything that we do. Yeah. And if this is the lead generation lever that you choose to pull, if this is where you feel, hey, there's passion in this particular market of the moment, and I want to be able to help my clients to get out of the, the forbearances and to make sure they're in a great situation, and I want to go out and help people, you know, to, to be in a better situation when they're going through this rough patch of, of, you know, potentially losing their homes, then this is part of the lead generation lever that you pull is making sure that you're learning for earning sake, that you're learning and you're taking action on that, right? That you're, you're learning and you're following the models of what's already successful. Because there's a lot of times where, where we go out and we're like, okay, I want to do this. And you can't just dip your toe in the water, right? You got to be all in uh, on it. So if this is the lead generation lever that you choose, 
um, like Rich mentioned, and, and this is a great lead generation lever, guys, right? That's why we're doing this is market of the moment, right? We've talked pre-foreclosure at uh, forbearances and pre-foreclosures. This is a great uh, opportunity. So thank you so much, Christina. Your, your heart is evident. Your compassion is evident. Um, and, and your knowledge is evident. And I, I, I am so thankful that you guys had me here. And I would just say, open your mind. There's a lot of unknown factors that we don't know. And um, we just need to navigate through them to help people. And uh, even businesses, this is going to be a big aspect for commercial. Uh, we're going to see more commercial foreclosures than we ever have. So there, there's so much opportunity, whether you're in commercial or residential, you're going to learn, have to learn how to navigate this. So um, I'm honored to be here and help. And um, thank you for having me. I really appreciate it. Yep. And if anybody, if you want the copy of the PowerPoint, anybody watching, you want some of the materials or letters, the things that we talked about, um, just email Monica, you know, text Monica. We'll get that to you. Again, Christina, thank you so much for your time. Have a great day. All right. I'll Thanks see you everybody. later. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye.